Cody finally gets a bit of revenge and Seth no longer feels like a just because guy when it comes to the biggest story heading into WrestleMania. As we saw on this past SmackDown, when all four members of, you know, this bloodline friendship circle hug, whatever going on, Roman Reigns, Rock, Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins, all four were in the ring and all four uh, got, a, got a chance to say what they wanted to say and added to the intensity that is this main event scene. We finally confirmed it. You know, it was a little speculated in the past, in the past week or so, it was uh, thrown out into the universe and now it's finally accepted and finalized. The night one main event will be Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns and The Rock. Should Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins win, then the bloodline is barred from ringside being involved in the night two main event of Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes for the WWE title. Should Roman and Rock win, however, then the night two main event will be contested under bloodline rules. What does that mean? Basically the bloodline can just do whatever the hell they want as part of the, part of the match. They want to be a guest referee, they do that. Enforcer, manager, singer, all that. Whatever they want to do goes, it's bloodline rules. Well, it, it didn't take long for Seth to come out, get hyped, get on fire, and accept the t uh, tag match for night one. And you know, in this uh, in this uh, promo, Seth, you know, he showed the intensity that people long for him to have. He came at the Rock. To me, he he came out. Uh, he had the best lines at night as far as if this is like a promo battle he would be the mvp of it he he, he told a rock he called him mr uh midlife crisis he even got his uh his diarrhea Dwayne from monday night uh chanted by the crowd in this and he he came he like i said he left feeling like he was supposed to be there like he's a part of story now not just a oh here's stuff to the even the odds but the part that will be used, you know, for pack, uh, video packages leading to this, the part that was shown for probably years to come, Cody Rhodes finally, finally smacked The Rock back. If you recall, back at the kickoff uh, press conference about a month ago, this uh, month ago, you know, give or take a couple of days, you know, The Rock slapped Cody for say, uh, Cody saying, you know, the fam the family would be uh, ashamed that Roman, you know, the, all the dead relatives would be ashamed that Roman, they were here and stuff. And now a month later, Cody finally smacks Rock after Rock called Cody a mistake. To me now, the gloves are off. Um, I had thought more than likely there was a chance that, you know, at least between these four members, that, uh, there wouldn't be much physicality. Um, like they, they wouldn't touch each other. The only physicality that will come will be Solo and Jimmy probably against Seth and Cody. That's still probably bound to happen just cause. But I didn't think the main four of the uh, people would t uh, get physical. But now that Rock slapped Cody, Clay set Rock. I expect there to be you no know, more punches thrown, kicks thrown. I expect a Superman punch at Rock bottom. Maybe, maybe a crossroads or a stomp thrown in there too, who knows, but expect hands to be laid uh, with some sort of de uh, decent frequency between now and April 6th, April 7th, WrestleMania. And like I said, Cody finally got a bit of revenge to rock. That came out looking like he belonged. It's funny cause like the, uh, the two big, like worldwide bigger stars, Rock and Roman came out looking worse to this. I thought, you know, Rock, you know, it's, he's typically uh, good on the promos. I enjoy his promos, but he kind of rambled and reiterated stuff and saying stuff. And Roman didn't add too much to this. You know, he kind of fired back to Cody because Cody at the start of this was saying, you know, Rock, how can you make these stipulations when you acknowledge Roman as a tribal chief? And Roman was like, you know, kind of like a, a retort, like, it's because Seth uh, accepted a challenge. And Roman was like, 
you gonna let you gonna let this 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 cross dresser uh uh answer for you you must become some kind of idiot you must be from texas which as a born texan i did not appreciate that just saying especially i was born i was born in dallas so i definitely don't appreciate which where smackdown was from this past week romany piece of shit anyway overall again great segment it was cut short because fox need to get their evening news out heaven forbid the evening news comes on five minutes late when the greatest thing fox is ever gonna have on their tv screens is going on right now but whatever another, another day whatever who gives a crap but the tone is set the match is made we know how things are gonna go down uh, and i'm excited to get there one more thing the rock again mentioned that he was on the board he uh, mentioned again that you know he could do kind of whatever he wants and nobody could stop him and the added wrinkle to this by roman the rock basically st stated that if cody like fails if cody fails to get the title here at mania then that's it no more chances he also alluded again Rock alludes again to Seth, I can make your title go away. But the big thing was that Cody, the, the Cody loses here. No more shots to finish the story. No more shots at Roman's title. So a little bit of ad stakes. The fact that The Rock mentioned his board member, you know, status again, that he's a part of the parent company that owns WWE. It's planting more and more seeds for Triple H, who is the chief content uh, officer and kind of like the authority figure on as far as TV goes for WWE. It kind of, it remains to see if he's gonna step in here. Now, could he step in before Mania? Sure. Could he step in at Mania? Probably, you know, and make sure the Rock doesn't go too crazy with power. But what I, I can see more so is after Mania, should the uh, Rock stick, or depending on how long he sticks around afterwards, should he stick around like, right after mania we'll see triple h kind of step in or if after Mania, the rock goes away and then comes back then he said then triple h whatever expect some sort of build between rock and triple h now it can't be a match obviously because triple h had a health scare a couple years ago he has a pacemaker and so we as cool as it would be to see those two go at it obviously safety first he wants triple h to take care of himself but if we get to like war games when it happens and it's like a Team Triple H versus Team Bloodline or Team Rock, that would be dope. But that's down the line. That's not WrestleMania. Right now, we have the biggest tag team match in WrestleMania history, which is crazy. After one of the biggest uh, tag team matches in WrestleMania history, closed night one last year between Usos and Kevin and Sammy. One of, I argue that the first WrestleMania uh, match was bigger it was like hogan and mr t versus paul orndorff and roddy piper i think i don't know i'm not that old the biggest tag team match in wrestling history was night one and one of the most important main events of history takes night two we'll see how that plays out again again really excited really looking forward to it my juices are flowing about this and yeah WrestleMania XL is going to be great. All right, now let's go to Monday Night Raw. I'm going to kind of go over the, the main points of Raw. If I covered every single thing that happened this week on all four programs, this would be a two hour video. And your boy does not feel like editing a two hour video. Cody Rhodes opens a show. He talks about uh, The Rock's, you know, past couple of weeks doing promos from a social media account. How The Rock didn't accept a one on one offer for a match. He acknowledges that. Uh, the Rock, uh, that Cody Rose and, Rock, and The Rock had a conversation about the main event, main event before the whole fiasco went down. And then Cody brings out Seth Rollins, and, t and then tells Seth Rollins, "Listen, if you need to focus on Drew instead, don't want to do a tag match. You're more than welcome to." Again, remember this is before Friday Night SmackDown. R uh, Rollins again reiterates this is the best chance to take down the Bloodline uh, before your know, Roman Reigns all gets too much power in this company this is where Rollins uh, refers to The Rock as Diarrhea Dwayne and then they, they and then they announced that they'll give their answer later on this week at Smackdown okay so Liv Morgan uh, interfered in the match between Becky Lynch and Nia Jax 
uh, Liv attacked Nia and then got in Becky's face until Nia took both of them out. After the match, uh, backstage, Liv and Becky agreed to a match next week just to sell their things. All while Rhea just laughing at Becky, dealing with like all of this shit going on before their huge title match at WrestleMania. Uh, Gunther and Dirty Dom had a match, which again, kind of inco- inconsequential, but Gunther beat the absolute shit out of Dom. <laughs> it was his, Dom's chest was red. It was, whew, it was a, it was an ass whooping. Along with that, uh, Judgment Day beat Imperium. So if it doesn't happen at Mania, I can see Judgment Day in, in Imperium feuding like post Mania. And like for the first part of the summer, we'll see. And then in your main event, it was Jay Uso versus uh, Drew McIntyre. Jay had, you know, Drew beat by the uh, end of match. And then Solo Sokoa comes from the crowd. Cody Roasting comes down to beat up on Solo through, back through the crowd. And then Jimmy comes and distracts Jay. So Drew can hit a Claymore and win. Jimmy, uh, then after, so after the match, Jimmy gets a chair, but the, uh, get a chair um about to beat on his brother and then Seth Rollins comes right out of the back running runs past Drew and Drew had a hilarious face for that to beat up on Jimmy and get Jimmy out of there and Drew comes back to the ring hits Seth Rollins with a claymore and yells for Seth not to not let you know the bloodline taint the title focus on me all that kind of stuff that's how Raw closed out overall decent show um we get more build for uh, the main event scene, Cody, Seth, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the feud before the feud or feud before the match of Becky and Liv and Knight, all that is heating up while Rhea's kind of just chilling, doing her thing. And like I said, Judgment Day Imperium are, were heating up. Uh, if that leads to something like a feud post WrestleMania, that'll be fun. Uh, Finn Balor, all of them can wrestle. Guther can wrestle. All, all six to eight, however you look at it, people involved, can wrestle. So it should be some fun matchups. Uh, and more, more than likely, I, I'll see if that happens. I can see Judgment Day going face from that. But we won't know until we get there. And Jimmy furthered uh, his uh, pet. Uh, he had to assume match with Jay at WrestleMania by coming out again and costing Jay a win. So at some point, Jay's going to get revenge. All right, we now move to NXT. And NXT had one, the, a TV special. It's basically like a PLE, except it was on free TV. Well, not free yet. You have to pay it for it. Damn YouTube TV. But it, NXT Roadblock, it was their last big event before Stand and Deliver, which is their WrestleMania, since it takes place WrestleMania Saturday before WrestleMania Saturday, night one. Um, <laughs> But to start us off, uh, Dijak beat Joe Gacy in an uh, asylum match, which is basically just a cage match with a bunch of weapons inside the cage. Dijak hit a great moonsault in his match. The weapons in the cage were used effectively. It wasn't just barrage and it wasn't like one was used. It was paced good. There was a funny moment. So there's a boxing ring that says, do not open. And Dijak went over there and he was like, oh, I'm going to open this. And when he did, it was a spring loaded boxing glove that hit him in the nuts. I, I laughed. <laughs> uh, uh, what's called Looney Tunes humor would never not be funny to me. So again, good match. And the way the announcers were talking, it, it sounded like what I thought would be a feud continuer was looking more like a feud ender. So I'm curious to see what Dijak moves on to after this. Does he go after... Oba Femi, does he get in our, find someone else to challenge for a stand and deliver? We'll see. Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin successfully defended their tag tiles against Chase U. Very good back and forth. Andre Chase has proven that he can wrestle Duke Hudson too. And you already know Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker can go. However, after a match, uh, JC Jane uh, called Thea Hale a loser, and to which made Thea run off. So, could there be dissension of Chase U uh, coming? We'll see. Uh, a little bit after the match, Thea Hill was caught, uh, stopped by refs backstage fighting with um, Kiana James and Izzy Dane. Dane? 
Dane, whatever her last name is. And then Dane was like, oh, I got tagged. Thea came back later after that. Was like, I got a tag match against Kiana and Izzy. JC can be my partner. And she's like, nah, sucker, I'm busy. So is there just does there dissension in Chase U? Is Chase U going to change? Like go heal soon or break up? We'll see. But I'm curious to see how that goes moving forward. Um Sean Spears beat Uriah Connors in Sean's first match back at NXT. Afterwards, he calls Ridge a hypocrite uh, and not being who he actually is, you know, trying to be a family man instead of just be the badass he's supposed to be. Ridge comes out to attack uh, Sean Spears. Sears like, yes, please attack me. Be who you are. And before Ridge can use a chair, the rest come and break it up. So any sort of Sean Spears on my screen, I welcome it. I love it. One of my, he's one of my favorites. And if this gets a decent feud out of Ridge Holland and a decent program out of Ridge Holland for the first time, everyone wins. All right, Kabuki Warriors uh, defended their titles against Lyra Vakira and Tatum Paxley, who who Tatum is Lyra's like friend slash stalker, for lack of a better term. They uh, won. Kabuki Warriors defended. Kabuki Warriors are good. Everybody knows that. They're good. They're always good. It let Lyra show off her skills and Tatum was there to be Tatum. But after the match, Roxanne Perez came out and attacked Lyra and did some sort of like jump snap uh, kick thing on when Lyra's arm was like in the rope or something. And like, can I show on screen one? And the arm went Bleh! And Lyra was rushed to a hospital afterwards in the back of an ambulance. I assume it's gonna keep Lyra off TV for a couple weeks while Roxanne builds her case to be the number one contender for that title for standing to deliver. William Regal came back to do a quick little spot. If you don't know, his son is Charlie Dempsey, like his actual son, who and Charlie Dempsey won the Heritage Cup last week. William Regal came out and says, oh yeah, I love the Heritage Cup. Oh yeah, great, British wrestling, yeah. And Charlie's like, I'll defend this title better. Like, I'll defend this cup better than you ever could. That's an insult to his father. And William was like, yeah, we'll see, bitch. <laughs> he, he didn't say that last part, but in his head he did. And then in the main event, it was Tony D'Angelo versus Carmelo Hayes for the winner was number one contender for NXT title stand deliver. Uh, as the theme with tonight, decent back and forth match, but to win it, Tony D'Angelo played tricks, trick Williams music, distracted uh, Carmelo and was able to hit him with his uh, finish move it was the forget about it and get, get the pin afterwards trick mu music hit again. And Trick Williams, Trick Williams came back and took out Carmelo and Carmelo security guards to end the show. I guess for the magnitude of the matches, it was like a special event, but this almost didn't feel any different than like a a normal uh, NXT, just because there was some forgettable matches thrown in there too. But they're they're building to their again. I said their WrestleMania, which is stand and deliver. So we have. We have confirmed now uh, Tony D'Angelo is facing Ilya. One has to assume Carmelo Trick has a match. And we'll see what happens to Chase U going forward. All right, in the last show of the week, SmackDown. Logan Paul opens the show. He announces, along with KSI, that Prime will be the in-ring logo sponsor for all PLEs. After they announce that, Randy Orton comes out and RKO's KSI while Logan slithers away. After, you know, after a commercial break, it was Randy Orton and Kevin Owens versus Austin Theory, Grayson Waller. Uh, standard tag match on SmackDown, Randy Orton and Kevin Owens win. Logan attacks uh, Randy Orton and Kevin Owens until uh, Randy and Kevin chase everyone away. So, fun opener. And the addition of the prime logo in the ring for all PLEs is either going to be the worst idea or it's going to be hilarious. I cannot wait to find out. Uh, Bailey and Damage Control each had backstage segments. Bailey was a sit down interview with Caleb Braxton. And you know, she said, oh, I've, I've been betrayed by Damage Control and I probably should have seen it coming. And you know, she says like, I, she understands she was a bad person for a while and if, this could be, you know, karma, and she she understands why 
what's happening is happening and she vows to make sure that damage control doesn't underestimate her for too long and you know for the upcoming uh what i dubbed the uh forgotten main event of eos guy bailey for the wwe women's title at wrestlemania damage control will come back and say oh bailey was easy to manipulate and she was never going to be a, a part of future damage control and yeah standard back and forth in this forgotten mania title match Karrion cross and bobby lashley had a match until afp street prophet scarlet and bfab all came in and uh you know made their presence felt and it ended with Karrion cross standing tall and then obviously we talked about the main event of a uh, segment of bloodline all that one thing i didn't talk about earlier which is cool the rock got a brand new entrance same music but like the arena goes dark and like lightning bolts shoot off the uh titan tron and it ends with like being him being featured like a spotlight is it was cool it was a cool entrance uh i'm sure it's on wde's uh, youtube channel go uh find it look it up that'll be cool but yeah that is what happened as far as next week's going on on raw it was announced that live versus obviously live versus becky zoe and shayna baszler versus kabuki warriors for the women's tag titles and there will be a six-man gauntlet match where the winner will face gunther at wrestlemania for the intercontinental title participants are ricochet jessica nakamura chad gable Sami Zayn, bronson reed and jd mcdonough okay jd mcdonough feels thrown in there um as far as who wins i'm down to either Sami Zayn or chad gable only because they're telling us the story of Sami Zayn, be like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna get back to wrestlemania get back to having a shot there get back to having a match there and chad gable who on his social has been posting videos about his journey and he came so close last year and this could be his finally his big moment but as far as a winner i say i agree with this i do think it's sammy zane's gonna win he is between him and gable uh between him and gable sammy is the bigger star and while gable would be the bigger emotional victory should he beat gunther at wrestlemania on paper Sami Zayn and Guther is, is it's bigger it just is and I think that's the right I think that's the way they go so look for Sami Zayn to win the gauntlet match also Kabuki Warriors are retaining there's no point losing that title next week for NXT we have Ridge Holland and Sean Spears announced I expect shenanigans there to happen Sean either gets himself DQ'd or he forces Ridge to get DQ'd by going too far but I don't think that's the end of that. This probably is, I will say, a stand and deliver match. So look for something, for some Fugazi thing to happen here. And we don't get a clean winner of this. So, yeah. And then we have Brooks Jensen versus Oba Femi for the NXT North America title. Oba's whooping that ass. That's just, Brooks don't get a little bit of offense just because he's a baby face and is getting featured more. But Oba's whooping that ass. He's going to retain the title. And hopefully his neck his next challenger for the, the title is if not announced hinted to i can see a dijak uh challenge oba at nxt oh my god that match would be great i want dijak to <laughs> take on oba femi for the title now but like i said look for oba's next challenger to be hinted at following this brooks jensen match and then obviously with the tony tony well obviously with tony winning the uh no more contender uh spot Look for him and Ilya to start maybe interacting and then look for Trick Williams to come out and want a, his pound of flesh from Carmelo who will dodge him and duck him and all that stuff until they fight at Stand and Deliver. And it could be like one of his unsanctioned matches, but we'll see. And then next week on SmackDown, what was announced is Dakota Kai versus Bailey. So look for that to hopefully be uh, good and for damage control to probably jump bailey and to beat her ass next week ray mysterio returns so look for him to get revenge on santos for injuring him as they most likely build towards a wrestlemania match and as far as like the main like over our like main event goes um on raw i can see 
Cody and Seth talking about um what's uh the, the tag match. Uh I can see Drew coming out and either attacking Seth again or telling Seth, you done screwed yourself, you know, taking that match and having to fight me the next day. Cause Drew and Seth is confirmed for night two. And look for Jay to finally call out his brother, just straight up call him out. Uh I this week that match should be announced if it or at the very least next week, but look for them to start actually f officially building towards Jimmy J at WrestleMania. As far as the, um, the Rock and Roman are concerned, I do believe the Rock is uh, confirmed for Memphis. While I don't think we get a full call out of Cody, I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised that if we do that, you know, the, uh, the they do a thing where Rock tries to get physical, but is held back by security. Or Roman, I, I don't. I think they'll tease, you know, fighting each other right now, and then just hold off on it. Or we'll see um, the Rock call out Cody, which leads to a bloodline beat down of Cody Rhodes. Something, something like that. We'll see something like that. It's the Rock and Cody. I aren't, aren't gonna lay hands this close to that slap. Uh, but look for Solo and Jimmy or so just to whoop Cody's ass, and maybe Seth and Jay come out to help. We'll see. I don't. We'll see. But that's what's probably going to happen next week. We won't know until we watch. But for now, I bid you guys adieu. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead and like and subscribe for me. It helps me out. And I will catch you guys in the next video. I am Heartfelt. Peace.